there are two types of installment loans. One is called a fixed installment loan. This is like a loan that you get to pay off a car, where there's a preset number of months, and you pay the same amount every one of those months. The next type of installment loan is called an open-end installment loan. These are like credit card loans where you make a different payment every month, and there's no preset number of months for which this loan needs to be paid back. All of these loans have finance charges, which just means the total amount of money that you're paying to borrow this money. And in a lot of these problems, we're going to be using an annual percentage rate, or APR, which is like a simple interest rate, but it's used to compare one loan to another. Now that we've got some definitions written down, let's take a look at our first example. Let's determine the monthly payment on a loan of $10,000 over five years with a 6% APR. And to do this, we're going to use the installment payment formula. So get ready for a complicated formula. Now for this formula, M represents the monthly payment, P is the total amount borrowed, R is the APR interest rate, that of course needs to be written as a decimal, T is the time in years, and N in this case is the number of payments that you're going to make per year. Pretty frequently, our N value is going to be 12 because you're making monthly payments. So in this problem, we are borrowing a total of $10,000, that means P is going to be 10,000. Our APR is 6%, so that R value is going to be 0.06. We're taking this loan out over five years, so T is going to be five. And this is a monthly payment, so our N value is going to be 12. If we take all of those numbers and plug them into this formula, here's what we get. Plugging all this into our calculator can be a bit of a chore. Let's go through it step by step. Let's simplify what's in parentheses in the numerator by dividing 0 0.06 by 12. Okay, that's 0 0.005. In the denominator, let's simplify the 1 plus 0.6 over 12 in parentheses. That's 1.005. And let's also simplify the negative 12 times 5. That's negative 60. Now let's give ourselves a little bit of room here and continue the simplification. The numerator is now 10,000 times 0 0.005. Let's see if we can enter that in. I'm getting 50 for my numerator. Let's next try to calculate 1.005 to the negative 60th power. For this little piece, my calculator is giving me 0.74137. I'm going to take as many decimal places as I can here. Now let's simplify the denominator by subtracting that number from 1. That gives me 0.2586278 in the denominator. Now let's finally get our value for M, our monthly payment by dividing 50 by this result. I'm getting $193.33. That is a pretty good answer. Let's try to do the same problem, just a different way. We're going to determine the monthly payment on the same exact loan, but this time we're gonna use this table, this annual percentage rate table for monthly payments. The first thing that we wanna do here is look up our APR in the table. We're gonna be looking at this column right here. Now, a five-year loan is how many monthly payments? Well, five years times 12 months per year gives us 60 monthly payments. What that means is we need to be looking at this number here in the table. And what this number gives us is the finance charge for taking out this loan for every $100 that we borrow. So how many hundreds of dollars are we borrowing? Well, we're borrowing $10,000. If we want to know how many hundreds that is, we can divide that by $100. That gives us that we were borrowing 100 $100 increments. We are charged $16 per increment, so our total finance charges for taking out this loan is $1,600. So we're borrowing $10,000, and we have a $1,600 finance charge on top of that. So ultimately, over the course of these five years, we need to pay back $10,000 plus the $1,600, which comes out to be $11,600. Now, if you're still with me here, we have one more step. This $11,600 needs to be paid off over the course of 60 months. So if we take that 11,600 that we owe and divide it by 60 months, we get $193.33 as our monthly payment. And you'll notice that that is the same monthly payment that we got in the previous problem. So we'll need to know how to do these calculations using both of these techniques. So take another good look at that, make sure that the steps make sense, and then let's move on to this next problem. You're buying a used car that costs $11,000. You can make a down payment of $4,000, and you'll be making 36 monthly payments of $222. The question is, what finance charge are you paying? Well, again, the finance charge is how much money you're paying just to borrow the money. So the first question I would ask is, how much are you actually borrowing? Well, your car costs $11,000, but you're making a down payment of $4,000. 
That means that you're immediately paying $4,000 towards the car, leaving only $7,000 that you're financing. Okay, that'll be good to know. Next, let's find out how much you're actually paying over the entire course of this loan. You're going to make 36 payments, and each one of those payments is going to be $224. So you're paying a total of $8,064. So you're borrowing $7,000, but ultimately you're paying $8,064. Subtracting those two gives me $1,064, and that's how much your finance charge is. If we now want to find your APR, what we need to do is find how much you're paying in finance charges per $100 that you borrowed. Well, we're borrowing $7,000. That is 70 times $100. So if we want to know how much we're paying in finance charges per $100 that we're borrowing, we divide our total finance charges by 70 and that is giving me $15.2 or $15.20. Now I'm realizing that this table that I gave you is not enough so I'm going to get rid of it and replace it with one that we can actually use. We're going to look up this $15.20 in our table in the row with 36 payments. When we do that we see that the closest number to $15.20 is over here and that gives us an APR of approximately 9.5. Okay so that's the answer to the second part of that question. Now we've got a couple of pretty tough problems coming so let's take a look at the next one. You take out a 60 month loan for $12,000 and make payments of $232 per month. Instead of making payment number 36, you wish to pay off the loan. First, let's determine the APR of this loan. But we're going to use this table over here to determine the APR. But before we can do that, we have to figure out our finance charges. So how much do we expect to pay for this loan first? We're paying $232 per month for 60 months. Multiply those numbers together and we get $13,920 that we expect to pay. And if our original loan was $12,000, that means in finance charges, we are paying $19,000. $1,920. To use this table though, we need to find the finance charges per $100 borrowed. Well, how many $100 increments are in $12,000? If we divide 12,000 by 100, that is 120 increments. So we're going to divide $1,920, our total finance charges, by 120 increments. That gives us that our finance charges per $100 borrowed is $16. Now, if we look up in this table, in the 60-month payment row, we can find 16 over here. That means that our APR is 6%. The next question asks us to find how much interest we're going to save by paying this loan off early. Again, instead of making payment number 36, we're going to pay off the loan completely. So get ready for a formula. This is called the unearned interest formula. This is interest that goes unearned by the bank. U represents that unearned interest. N is the number of payments you're making per year. P is the monthly payment and V is a little bit of a tricky one. We're going to get V from this table up here. We are going to use the 6% APR column, but we need to look at the row that has the number of payments that we have left. The number of payments we have left is just going to be 60 minus 36, which is 24. So we have 24 payments left if we exclude uh, that payment number 36. So we look up in this table, under number of payments, we see 24 is our row. We have this number 6.3, seven and that is going to be our V. So how do we summarize this? Uh, v is the value from our APR table corresponding to the APR and the number of payments that you have left. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug the numbers for this problem in. Our number of monthly payments per year is 12. Our monthly payment was $232 for this problem. And the value that we got from the table was $6.37. In the denominator, we have 100 plus the 637 from the table. Plugging all that into my calculator is giving me $166.72. That is the amount of money that we're saving by paying this loan off early. For the final question, we're going to determine the total amount due to completely pay off this loan. So instead of making our 36th payment, we're going to pay the total amount due. Well, from the first part of this problem, we found that the total amount of money that we expected to pay for this loan was 13,920. The total amount that we've paid so far for this loan 
is our 35 payments of $232. So, so far we've paid $8,120 for this loan. We also know that we're saving $166.72 by paying off this loan early. So how much do we have left to pay off this loan? Well, it's gonna be that $13,920 minus what we've paid so far, minus the savings that we're going to make by paying off the loan early. I'm getting $5,633.28 as the total amount that we owe on this loan. Okay, we have one more. It's another tricky one. On February 2nd, that's the billing date, Carol Ann had a balance due of $129.21. She made the transactions described in the table during the month. So you can see over here that Carol Ann made three charges and one payment. We're going to determine the finance charge that this credit card company is going to charge Carol Ann on March 2nd using the previous balance method. And then we're going to determine the new balance. Well, the previous balance method is kind of what it sounds like. Credit card companies typically only charge you interest on your previous balance. So if we want to figure out how much interest is charged to Carol Ann, all we have to do is look at her previous balance. And we're basically just using a simple interest here. The interest charged is the principal times the rate times time. That previous balance is going to give us a principal of $129.21. Interest rate is 1.25% per month, so we convert that to a decimal, and this interest has accrued over the past month. That means that the interest charged to Carol Ann's account is going to be $1.62 if we round up. Now as far as Carol Ann's new balance goes, we just need to add and subtract everything up. We started with $129.21 balance. We're going to add to that a $1.62 finance charge. Carol Ann also charged $20.65. She then made a payment of $100, thus reducing her balance. And then she bought $67.51 worth of flowers and a CD for $10.22. And okay, that was a coincidence. I added all those numbers up and got that her new balance is the exact same thing as her old balance. Okay, that was a long one. Had a lot of formulas in there. This would probably be a good video to watch a couple of times. Go back and take another look. The next video is about mortgages. I'll see you there.